send a mixed signals to Corsair because we liked the Frame 4000D, we really hated the Origin computer, and now I kind of like some of the stuff that's here again. So this case is really interesting. It is airflow targeted. So it's called the Air 5400. We'll spend most of the time talking about this, where basically what they're doing is this, this is a giant hole. This is not extremely clean glass. It's just a hole in the case. They're doing a front-mounted radiator, shoving the air straight out of the case, which allows it to not potentially accumulate heat, but it also uh, ends up focusing airflow for the GPU entirely from its own set of fans down here. So we'll talk about that. This is probably the most interesting to me. It is uh, going to be around $220, depending on the tariff situation. It's changed again in the last week. Other stuff, though. So this GPU is an update to the i500 that we um, hated and they've improved it a lot. So uh, this is the one where last time there was basically no contact to any of the power components on the i500. So the i600 that's coming out has massive overhauls to it. So the case itself has only slightly changed, but that change has allowed accommodation of larger radiators. And then the block for the video card, including the power components, uh, is totally different in a way that looks promising. We'll have to review that later. We'll go over that. There's some 3D printed stuff that they're talking about back in the corner. A uh, bunch of other cases behind me. We'll go through as much as we can, but let's start with this one. Before that, this video is brought to you by Thermalrite and the Frozen Prism 360 liquid cooler. Thermalrite's Frozen Prism is one of the most affordable liquid coolers on the market and is able to achieve competitive results with a high cold plate convexity that applies pressure centrally to the silicon area based on our testing. This works on both AMD and Intel. We previously benchmarked the Frozen Prism and found that it's overall competitive for its price point. The cooler comes in a few color variations. It has a blackout option and an RGB option, and it's the cheapest liquid cooler we've tested anytime recently that still hits performance markers. Learn more at the link in the description below. All right, so the quick run through on the case. Uh, we saw this previously, but we haven't had a whole lot of time to look at it. Internally, there is a duct down here. So they've got three 120s. The whole case is set up for all 120s, which simplifies some things. And the duct is just to guide the air straight into the GPU. Corsair is claiming that they're getting about a one to two degree uh, improvement with the duct versus without and a like for like test. So it makes sense. You're shoving air straight into it. The only area that if you end up with a uh, front radiator over here and then all the rest of the air coming through for the GPU, the only area that gets kind of abandoned is potentially up in the VRM area and some of the board components like system memory. Some of that might get up and around through the GPU. If it's a flow through, it's going to dump onto the memory anyway, which typically uh, has more of a cooling effect than not, but it depends on the video card. Um, there are mounts for fans up in the top, and they've got another duct here as well, so that could have fans in it. And then interestingly, you see these two holes here. So this is actually for a 120 millimeter fan, which obviously the first thing you think is, uh, that is not 120 millimeter hole spacing, but Corsair's plan is to just include a bracket that would adapt to 120 mil, so it would actually cut out into this glass area past the steel frame, uh, and so you're losing, I don't know, maybe 40% of the fan or something um, by length, and then it just screws in here with the adapter. So this is one of those things where uh, I was telling Corsair in a review, if they included a fan there and pre-installed it, we'd probably be critical of it, but if it's just an option, then I'm definitely fine with that. Um, it should still help. It's just, it's a question of does, is there any acoustic trade-off for blasting air into, the, into a wall like that? Now, the glass, speaking of it, has a, uh, it's laminated now, so a couple companies are doing this. The laminating from what Corsair is saying is really just to turn it into more of like that kind of, I don't know, car windshield safety glass type thing where it all stays put together if it shatters. And uh, a lot of people have shattered glass that they post on Reddit. Normally it has to do with sitting on a tile floor. It's a problem for everybody, so this is supposed to start helping it. Uh, Height has been advertising that theirs is an acoustic glass. We'll have to test that in the chamber, but um, that is a, that was not the marketing from Corsair. It was just to be safer. So, all right, for this side. So uh, it's really just as simple as just a big acrylic sheet. Air comes in, goes out the side. Um, on the back panel here, there's a huge amount of cable management depth. The motherboard tray is just punctured all the way through. And uh, the only sort of downside with this is if you look down here in this corner, so because the BTF support uh, and just holes everywhere in the tray itself, they do have to contend with 
structural rigidity. So I think this is a 0.8 millimeter steel or something, which helps a little bit with it. Uh, and then they've also been taking some of the feedback on the 4000D series cases for the top panel and strengthening that too. So anyway, that is uh, the 5400 Air. And this case, so it's $220, three 120 fans included. And uh, otherwise, let's move on to the other stuff. The GPU, this is for the i600, the i500 replacement. Stuff that jumped out at us right away is fin stacks for the VRM. These are connected to a shared copper, nickel plated copper base plate for the GPU and the memory. And so everything's connected to the same base plate, which is connected to the liquid cooler, which means all the heat gets basically dumped into the liquid cooler. So there's pros and cons to that. Pros are all of the other components get cooled better. Uh, downside is that the GPU itself is sharing the heat dissipation capacity with all the other components in the cooler. Um, and so you typically see some, some increase in the GPU temperature as a result. So ups and downs, not really, one's not necessarily better than the other as long as it's all cooled. These are copper bars. So these just contact the MOSFETs. Uh, and then otherwise, the original, the i500 review that we did, most of that stuff was, it was like completely untouched. Uh, that was when I made the joke about melting down the EMI shielding in the front and turning it into a heat sink, which would have worked, but they didn't do that. I don't know why they didn't take my idea. Um, this looks a little bit better though. There's two variants. So this one is just one fin stack out here. Corsair has also modified over there, the radiator for the CPU cooler. So these are all components for the new pre-built where uh, they've moved the tanks. So the tanks are off to the sides now. Normally you see that protrusion at the, the, these sides of the tank, uh, and then the tubes run this way. They're running the tubes the other direction, offset them to the sides. This allows them to fit it in the I-600 or the former I-500Ks. Uh, and they're also moving to 25 millimeter thick fans where previously they had some of the slim fans, the 15 mil thick fans. Uh, so that extra 10 millimeters helps with pressure, should help with performance a lot. Uh, and they were able to do it by just bumping one of the top panel components up another five millimeters, but the rest of it remains mostly the same. We have some shots the case will drop in. So looks like promising changes for the i600. We'll do the review as soon as we buy one, uh, but let's move over to some of the other cases. All right, so this is a frame 4000D. They've changed a few things. This is a prototype. The thing I want to focus on is the power board back here. So uh, this is a Singularity power board. They're partnering with Singularity to build this. Um, and in some ways similar to the, the uh, I think it's called the Bench Lab from Elmore, with the exception that this does not log power. They could do it with some controller, some ICs, but currently what they're doing basically is you just run all the power cables into the power board, then route them to their final uh, location. There's, I think I counted 10, five here, five here, fan headers, a bunch of RGB headers. Um, there's a lot of possibilities with this. Currently, it's mostly being used as just a cable management tool. Uh, but you could, in theory, expand this to include more switches. So there's one switch on there. But you could do more uh, fan control switches. You could individualize things. They could do, I would really like to see current monitoring. Um, gets more expensive. But that could be a potential uh, useful direction to go where you could monitor on the 12 volt high power, for instance, which instantly becomes a, a great marketing point for Corsair and very useful for end users. And then also logging things like 24 pin versus EPS or PCIe, uh, that could all be done through a power board with the right, the right logic on it, like Elmore does. Um, but that was the most interesting thing to me. The protype, otherwise, the front panel is different. They've got the die cut edge now. I think we've shown pieces of this before. Uh, and then the last thing I want to show is the power supply for this setup. They're doing an acrylic, I think it is, wall for the power supply instead of the steel. But there's a big challenge with this. So the challenge is plastic is an insulator. It is actually incredibly good at insulating, which means that if, like, if you, I don't know, if you've ever touched a, just a free acrylic sheet, you might get some static electricity, uh, ESD, or it could just be, a, uh, it could cause EMI issues. And so, of course, you're contending with potential ESD, but also uh, they lose some of the shielding that you would get with steel. Um, so they're basically getting this certified for the acrylic sides, and that's why we haven't seen a whole lot of this. Uh, as a part of this, Corsair's customized the caps and the PCBs so they get a nice color matching. I think the solder mask was customized as well from what I understand. And then also on the modular side, uh, it continues and then same thing, white PCB. Looks pretty nice, it's cool. If you have a case that actually has a, a visible power supply area, then it would look pretty good in it. It's just a question of when they get it certified and what the extra cost is for it. The 3D printing stuff's pretty cool. So 
Uh, Corsair was talking about for the 4000D and the frame series cases, the newer 4000D, getting into 3D printable panels and pieces. So on this, this is actually one of the Corsair employees 3D printed uh, shroud or I guess uh, duct, where if we tab through it, you can see what he's done is created this. It's all hosted on printable, so you can download it and put it in your own case, print it out if you wanted. Uh, so it takes Aaron through here, shoves it up, into this area where he's got the pump and res. And then there's another two fans that would be a shroud top type mount, except they end up with this hole underneath to give some space, some clearance for air intake. Takes air in through the scoop, through the side. Uh, and it's actually pretty cool, I like this. So this is on their um, account on principles with the prints needed to mount this PC to a pegboard. So they have a pegboard PC that you can basically print out. Um, they're not, as I understand it, currently selling the individual parts for it. They just put it out there, you download it, you can print it, and uh, it's kind of cool, stuff I like seeing. So kind of getting into some of the stuff that was promised with the Frame 4000D series, just expanding it a bit. There are other cases, so there's a 5000D. This has a giant screen in it on the side. I don't care too much about that, but that's the thing people are doing now. Uh, and then on the 5000D over here without the screen uh, it is a larger variant of the frame 4000D that we looked at. The pricing is supposed to be probably about $180, but it's in flux right now because of the tariff situation. And I think overall, I think that covers just about everything except for one more piece. So then we get over here to the uh, open concept. So this is using some of the same frame components where of course is trying to make, a, make the frame series modular and it's just an open frame. Um, there's an option for fan mounts as well. They're currently using all that for this gigantic radiator tower in the back. Uh, but otherwise, I mean, that's, it's just cool stuff. So that is it for the Corsair coverage. There's other cases. We'll look at them in reviews in the future. Uh, things at the top of my list are going to be the i600 and the 5400, I think, in terms of things we'll be looking at most immediately as soon as they're out. So check back for more as always. We have a ton from Computex this week. We've covered Haven, uh, we had the Fractal Mesh Phi 3 review. We've got the height content. So there's a lot of cases out there. We'll link them below. Subscribe for more. We'll see you all next time.